Hello and welcome back to some more Bitburners. So in the last video, I showed you guys how to create a script that can automatically hire employees for each of your offices and then allocate them to the respective jobs based off uh, a certain ratio and uh, proportion. Um, so I went ahead and used that script to upgrade all our offices uh, to 200 employees. So you can see here that everything is 200 employees except for sector 12. And the reason why sector 12 has 400 employees is because I decided that sector 12 will be our head office. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to automate the process of managing your products and the reason why we want to automate this process is because um, as time goes by the the actual sale price of your products actually depreciates so if you imagine like a, an iPhone 12 you know how that gets cheaper over time and, and the reason for this is because the demand uh, lowers over time and then also the incre uh, competition increases over time and uh, basically the game uses that same concept here uh, so if if I hover my mouse above this um, you could see the demand and comp competition figures here um, and if you don't see this in your UI you can go to the corporations tab and then purchase the market data competition and market data demand and then you can unlock uh, this view and basically you could see here that uh, product 3 has a demand of 80 and competition of 31. Uh, product 1 has a demand of 80 and competition of 24. And then uh, the um, product 2 has a demand of 95 and competition of 35. Um, so what does this mean? So if you look at the pricing here uh, for each of these products, so each of these products are developed with the same budget. And you can see that um, the pricing here uh, for product 3 is a lot lower compared to product 2. And the reason for this is because your sale price is determined by the difference between the demand and competition values and this demand and competition values is basically a number between 0 and 100 so over time the competition will rise up to uh, up above demand and uh, um, when that happens your uh, sale price is very very low um, so you want to be able to um, you know discontinue the product as soon as that happens and then um, redevelop a new product and then sell uh, your your product at, a, at the new price um, and this can be a very long and tedious process and um, requires you to actually watch for the development percentage um, or as soon as the de uh, development of this product completes so uh, we want to I guess um, outsource that job to the computer so that's why we're creating a script all right so let's jump into the terminal window and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a script called uh, corp product manager and this uh, script will manage our products for us um, so as usual the first thing I want to do is uh, I want to comment some of the inputs and then ask ourselves what's the main logic like and the input is basically your production budget um, and this is basically a combination of um, of the design and marketing budget so um, when we're making our product we're just going to divide it by two so cleanly in half um, and then uh, this product budget will be split between design and marketing whenever we're developing the product as for the main logic the first thing we want to do is we want to um, grab the division and then from the division um, you can actually um, grab the the products for that division um, and then uh, as soon as we grab all the products um, if we're developing a product for the division then we want to um, skip skip that um, so we don't want to run this script anymore mainly because we already have um, one product that's being developed so the, the reason why we want to skip if we're developing a product is because um, you want to have a few products that's actually generating you income uh, whilst the uh, one of the products is currently being redeveloped or developed the second check we want to do is we want to check whether or not we can develop a product um, and you can determine that by um, checking whether or not your business has funds uh, for the uh, to support the production budget uh, and also we should 
develop a product and you can check that by uh, comparing the uh, demand with the competition and then finding the difference between them uh, and then if we can develop a product and then should develop a product then we want to um, develop a new product and then we just repeat that process over and over again um, so yeah so that's the the main logic for it uh, so i'm gonna go ahead and code uh code this up and then um i'll see you guys on the i guess first checkpoint uh, so down here we uh, grab the production budget from our list of arguments and then we want to check whether or not that's defined mainly because um, this variable is very important whenever we're creating a product and we don't want the user to forget that when we run the script. Um, so you can actually get all your divisions by uh, using the get corporation uh, information. Uh, so if whenever you call this, um, I'll, I'll, I'm just going to print the outcome of this business uh, just to show you guys where to retrieve that. So when we ran this, this actually prints out all the information that you can get from your corporation information. So you have information about the corporation name, the amount of funds you have, the revenue, uh, expenses, etc. Uh, but we're, what we're interested in here is the uh, divisions. Um, and then you get uh, a list of all the divisions that you have. Uh, so every single division has information about, uh, I guess, first their name, uh, but also the uh, the products that they have. So the products and also the cities. Um, we're only interested in the, the products and then the division name. We don't really care about everything else. Uh, so that's what we're going to be using in our script. So whenever you're developing, make sure that you comment out uh, this eval uh, value. And then when you're running the script, you want to add this, that back. And the reason for that is because we want that um, the autocomplete uh, to come in. And if you, you have it as an eval, it doesn't really know what type of uh, variable this corporation variable is. Uh, so, so yeah, so for example here, uh, I want the get product function. Um, and if you have the eval surrounding it, then we don't really have that autocomplete there. All right, so now we have um, just a simple function called get products that basically just retrieves the division name and then maps the uh, all the product IDs with the actual product object. So you can retrieve the actual product object by calling the get product function of the corporation API. And if we print this, you would see all the information about all the products that we have. So it has information about the name, the current demand value, the competition, the uh, purchase uh, cost, uh, well, the production cost, and then the sell cost, city data, and all that stuff. Um, at the moment, it's very, very confusing. So it's not very user friendly uh, working with this information. So what we want to do is we, we want to transform this data into something that we can easily understand in our scripts. So I'm going to go back here and then uh, modify it a little bit further just so that we have something that is easily understood. All right, so I have all the information that we need from the product in the, and then map them to uh, a nicely readable object. Uh, so if we print that out again, uh, you would see that uh, all the information is laid out nicely except for city data. Uh, so if you read this, it doesn't really make sense unless you read through the documentation. Uh, but this, these three numbers basically symbolize first the quantity, so the amount of items you have on hand. The second is the amount produced. And then the third is the actual uh, items that you're, the amount that you're selling. Uh, the reason why it's a negative number right now is because of how we're using the market TA2 uh, to sell our products. So that's why we don't really have anything in our inventory. But um, if you don't have that, then this number will be a little bit bigger. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, actually tr transform this data, in the city data, into something that's a little bit easier to understand. All right, there you go. Basically, what I did was I just went through every single city information, so city name, and then mapped them into, um, map the data into a single object. So this city data is now a single array containing all the city and then also the information about them. So all the inventory, the amount produced and the amount solved, uh, sold. Uh, so if we uh, run that again, um, 
you'd see that this is nicely laid out now so we can easily analyze the information here and use the information in our scripts um, all right so what's the next step uh, so we grabbed all our product information uh, now we're gonna check whether or not we're developing the product and uh, to check whether we're developing a product the condition will only return true if any of this uh, the development progress amount is not equal to 100 uh, so as you can see here the development progress amount uh, is basically very very random it uh, goes past 100 sometimes and then goes under 100 sometimes so we, we will actually want to round that as well um, so I'm gonna create a function called um, uh, is developing product and then I'm gonna take in the products array and what this function will do is that it's just going to check whether or not there's any product that's being developed right now. So if there's uh, uh, anything that is under 100, then that means it's developing the product. Um, and we can do that by using the sum uh, uh, function of the array. And then just do the math.round, math.round, and then development progress is less than 100 and this is going to find anything that has uh, the development product progress that is less than 100% uh, and then we're going to use that here so if we're developing product then we want to skip so continue like so I also want to add some additional logging here um, and the reason for this is because it's nice to uh, see it in my my logs to see whether or not we're skipping uh, any steps for any division like that all right we did this step uh, the second step we want to do is we want to check whether we can develop a product and whether we should develop a product uh, so can develop product is very very easy uh, it's just checking whether or not we have the uh, required business funds to actually support that uh, the, the production budget. Uh, so let's do that here. So can develop product and then this takes in the business uh, information. And then what we want to do is we want to check whether or not 50% uh, of our funds is bigger than the production budget. And the reason why 50%, uh, the reason is because if you offload the management of uh, your funding or business funds to an actual script, uh, there's a high risk that it's going to use up all your money. Uh, so you, you want to avoid that. So, um, so the 0 0.5 is basically just a buffer just to make sure that we don't go bankrupt whenever we're developing our products. All right, so the second condition is uh, should develop product. And this should develop product is basically uh, checking whether or not the demand is higher than the um, the, the competition. Uh, so I'm gonna create that here. So should develop product. And this is just gonna take in a products uh, array here. And the time that we want to um, develop a product is first, um, we don't have, you know, the we haven't reached the maximum capacity. Uh, so we need to define this somewhere. So I'm going to define this up here. And um, I think every single division can support up to three products. So I just put that constant there. Um, the second condition of whether or not we should develop a product is whether the demand is lower than the competition. So we can do that by using the sum keyword again uh, to find anything that has um, that certain condition. And then we just want to grab the demand value and then also the competition value. Uh, so the first condition is if the demand is greater than the uh, competition, then we want to return false. 
Um, so these are called uh, guard clauses. So we just want to use guard clauses to um, capture everything that has, um, you know, the false condition. And then we're just going to return true by default. Um, so that's the first condition. So if the demand is higher than the competition, then we shouldn't develop a product mainly because uh, all our products are producing money. The second condition that we want to check is um, if the difference between uh, the demand and then the competition price is less than the 20% of the demand. And this 20% is basically just an ar arbitrary value. Uh, you can set it to 10% or 5% or whatever it is. Uh, but the reason why I said 20% is so that we can squeeze out some more money. Uh, I'm probably going to tweak this in the future just to see what happens. Um, but for now, I'm going to keep it as 20% and I'm going to put that into, um, I guess, the a, a variable here called demand threshold. And I'm going to keep it as 0 0.2. And then what we, we want to do is we want to um, check whether the difference oh, so the difference between uh, competition and demand is less than the demand threshold. So if difference is less than the demand of the demand threshold, then we want to return false. Uh, mainly because we want to squeeze as much money as we want. Uh, so those are the two con uh, conditions. So if the demand is lower than the competition and also the difference between the demand and competition is greater than 20% of the, the demand, then we want to return true. Uh, and then we just plug that into our main loop here. Uh, so if we can develop products, so we have enough budget for it. Um, and also we should develop a product so there's at least one uh, product that has um, you know lower uh, com co demand than the competition or we have less than uh, three products that we want to develop our product and we would just want to pass in the division and then the products as well so for developing the product there's really two conditions that we want to handle so the first is um, whether we have um, uh, max out products so you know if products out length is equal to the maximum products so we have all the products that we have then we want to um, basically just refine products otherwise we just want to build a product straight away um, because we we don't have you know less than uh, we, we haven't reached that threshold yet uh, so I also want to grab the budget so the budget for marketing and also the design is equal to each other so I'm just gonna divide the production budget by two uh, and then we want to add the conditional check so if products dot length is equal to the maximum products that we want to first uh, so this refined product um, basically we want to grab the lamest product from our division so again this is um, the one with the highest difference between the the competition and the demand um, and then the second thing we want to do is we want to grab the best city um, which is the the most productive city the reason why we want to grab the most productive city is because uh, the more it can produce uh, the more people it has so um, most of the time it's gonna default to sector 12 which is our head office um, mainly because it has 400 employees but in other divisions maybe you might select other cities to have to be your main office uh, so we want to grab the most productive city and then after that we just want to refine the product uh, don't worry about this because we're gonna be defining these functions um, and then we just pass in the division the best city uh, the lamest product and then the sum of the budget so marketing budget and also the design budget all right so for grabbing the product to discontinue basically what we're doing is that we're just going through every single product uh, that we have for the division 
and then we compare first the uh, the demand so if the demand is higher than competition then we obviously want to skip that because it's still producing money uh, otherwise we just want to grab the difference between the product demand uh, products demand and competition and then we just want to return the highest difference um, and then at the end of it we have the the product with the highest difference um, and it, this is basically the similar pattern as the get most productive city uh, but the only difference is that um, for get Mo most productive city we want to go through every single city in our product city data and then grab the one with the highest amount produced so I'm just gonna quickly code that up and then get back to you guys again uh, all right so it's like this so uh, again we're just gonna go through every single city uh, we compare the amount produced with the highest production if the amount produced by the city is greater than the highest production then we want to record the best city and then we just want to return the city name for that product after after grabbing the lamest product and then the best city we just want to refine that product and basically refining is just discontinuing the product and then recreating the product with the same budget so, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to code this up and then uh, get back to you guys as soon as I finish. Alright, so uh, this one, this one's pretty, uh, this one's finished. So um, basically what we're doing is we want to discontinue the product and then uh, with this one will delete the product from our list of products and then and then we want to recreate the product. So we want to call the make product and then pass in the division name, the city name the product name uh, and then the design and marketing budget uh, and then afterwards we want to sell the product as soon as you complete the product um, selling doesn't come in automatically so we want to call a function that can uh, sell the product for us so I'm gonna define a function here and um, the reason why we're gonna define define a function is because of um, is because we're gonna be reusing this function for to the um the other condition that we're we're um we need to handle which is create product um so for selling product um this one is quite simple um all right so here for selling product we want to call the corp dot sell product uh function here uh pass in the division name city name product name and then for uh i guess the production we want to set it to max and then set it as market price and then set it to all cities so this is basically the first step and then the second of uh, the next few steps is basically checking whether or not our office has researched some of the required uh, researches uh, so for research name I have market TA1 and market TA2 and uh, if you don't remember basically the, these researches is uh, what's gonna allow us to automatically sell uh, the product and automatically determine the pricing whenever we sell the product so uh, the first upgrade is market TA1 and uh, the reason why it, it looks like that is because I defined a constant up here called research names and uh, which basically my maps uh, object properties to the actual string value because uh, the corporation API doesn't provide that for you which is kind of stupid to be honest um, and then we first want to check whether market TA1 is enabled and if it is then we want to enable that and then the second check we want to do is we want to check whether market TA is uh, researched and if it is then we want to enable that as well um, all right, so that's basically how refining product does. Uh, the second step we want to do is we, we want to create the product. So creating a product is uh, basically similar to how we did it with the refined product, but the only difference is that we don't really need to find the lamest product. We just want to develop the product. Um, so I'm just going to code that up and then get back to you guys as well. All right, so that one's finished. So um, basically I generate the product name from the product length, um, but I have a feeling that this is gonna produce some bugs if you manually discontinue the products from your corporation tab. Um, so if that happens, um, I highly recommend generating your products based off uh, some sort of UID. Um, and then if you don't remember, we already, re we already created that function here called create UID. Um, so which basically just generates a random 
string of uh, values for you and then um, that way you're you know gonna be 100% sure that whenever you, you develop the product um, it's always gonna be uh, unique so you don't have to worry about um, the the product name there um, and then uh, basically we're after producing the the product name we then create the product and creating the product is again very simple so we just grab the vision name and then we just call the make product uh, function uh, for from the corporation API and then we sell the product similar to how we did the refined product so it's basically the last two steps here yeah so that's that's about it uh, so the last thing I want to do is I want to wrap this in some sort of um, uh, loop uh, mainly because we just want to run this over and over again uh, so that we don't have to manage our corporation or have to run the script again so this script will be responsible for managing our products for us uh, so uh, the easiest way to do that is just wrap it around a while true statement uh, and then define some sort of interval so I'm gonna run it every five seconds and then uh, just sleep like so so yeah so that's about it um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in some more logging statements but basically that covers every single uh, function that you really need to create this product manager so after creating the the, the script um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run that script and then assign a budget so i'm gonna assign 20 e15 so um 20 quadrillion dollars for developing the product so 10 quadrillion dollars will be going to design and tw tw uh, another 10 goes to marketing and then after running that we could see that this is uh, managing our products for us uh, at the moment all our products are generating money so it's probably not going to do anything uh, but as soon as uh, one of the products uh, reaches that threshold where, uh, for example, this one. So as soon as the demand is lower than the competition, then it's going to automatically discontinue that product for us. Um, all right, so that's about it. Um, so the next step I want to go over is uh, how to automate uh, the uh, advertising. Um, and the reason for this is because... Uh, if we uh, continuously click on this, you can see that as we uh, purchase more advertising, our profit uh, uh, increases with it as well. So in the next video, I'm going to be creating a script that can automatically uh, purchase this advertising ink for us. And then uh, the, reason, the only time that it would purchase the advertising ink is if the profit amount is bigger than the actual cost of purchasing it. Uh, I'll do that in the next video. Uh, but for now, I'm going to be looking at the YouTube comments. All right, so it looks like we have a few new ones, which is really good. Um, so uh, starting from the top, the first one is from George. And he says, hi, your guys have been really helpful. I'm currently stuck on the auto purchase server script. And unfortunately, that is what you did online. What do I put in the terminal when I want to run it? Is it run auto purchase server node uh, noodles? I'm not sure what to put in between the quotation marks. Uh, so basically, I, I believe that you've already answered you this. But um, basically, you just want to uh, put in the server name. So the target server here. Uh, basically, whenever you purchase the server, it's going to run the auto deploy script uh, and then target the noodle server. The second comment is from Yub and he says, uh, going through the video, if you waited just a split second, you could have had $3.114 trillion instead of 3.36. And this is from Bitburner number 23. I think that's the investment e exploit. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's uh, all about the timing, I think. Um, it's very, very quick. So if I, I guess, waited a split second, then uh, I, there's a high chance that I'm probably going to miss the, the trailing dollar. So I, I might as well just cash out as quickly as I can. Um, yeah, but that's a good point. Um, next one is from Sivade. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Um, hi, you're doing great work with the videos in, and tutorials. I'm do, doing my best to follow your scripts, but I'm a novice in all JavaScript. So uh, I wanted to ask if there was a way to 
alter and allow auto starter to utilize some of the home server RAM. I feel like it should be possible to factor some of our home server computing power on startup since it gives us a clear advantage, especially when we have a good amount of RAM after our first augmentation reset. Uh, is it tricky, tricky to allocate some home server RAM into auto starter? Um, it's not really it's not really too tricky um basically you don't really want to um, modify the auto starter you want to modify the one the scripts that it runs to actually deploy our hacking scripts so uh for uh basically at the beginning of the game you want to modify the auto deploy script and then um in the later game you want to modify the uh, launch fleet script so um, you what you want to modify is the points where it retrieves the target servers where you're gonna run your hacks uh, you want to include your home server in that the feature where you allocate a portion of the RAM might be a little bit tricky but um, adding the home server into your uh, launch fleets or auto deploy shouldn't be too tricky um, next one is from Tiago and he says copied auto deploy according to game RAM necessary syntax error still it is helpful thanks a lot uh, thanks for that Tiago um, the only time that this happens is if you don't have the all the required dependencies so make sure that you copy not just the auto deploy but also the dependencies as well like the utils folder and whatnot uh util script and whatnot uh next one is from outcast army and he says um, i'm trying to write script for mega burner now arcade game in new tokyo i love it uh it has no effect on your may account as far as i know it's just there uh, and well i had to try it i'm up 949 hacking level now it's just an old version of the game fun to see how it progressed and how much fun it is in the new one um wait there's an arcade game in new tokyo uh, let me see this so let me travel to new tokyo and then where is that arcade noodle bar oh arcade what is this? I didn't know this existed. What? It's like Bitburner and Bitburner. That's cool. What the heck? Damn. It's like Gameception. <laughs> uh, Alright, next one is from Botsy Collins and he says, Is there a way to get a hacknet script without um, formulas.exe? I had one but it isn't working anymore since last week um, you can uh, but the only difference is that you want to purchase hacknet nodes based off the cheapest price and the reason why formulas.exe is helpful is because uh, it actually tells you how much profit you're gonna get if you uh, I guess do an action so that's the reason why our my hacknet script uh, relies on formulas.exe but you can actually modify that to um, base its decision based off the lowest purchase cost. Um, and then you shouldn't need the formulas.exe for that. Uh, and then the last one is from Games Gamer Tronky Studios. And he says JavaScript and C Sharp are very similar to each other. Uh, yes and no. Uh, so JavaScript is very basically just comprised of a whole lot of functions. C Sharp is more of an object oriented language, but the, basically the underlying concepts of, uh, I guess, programming language is there. So loops, variables, uh, data types, all that stuff is basically similar, but the syntax is different. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's about it. Um, so again, in the next video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a script that can automatically purchase the uh, advertising for us just so that we don't have to man uh, manually click on that um, the advertising button here just to find the optimal profit for us so i'll see you guys in the next one